the, the Stoics weren't the only people to talk about four main virtues. The Platonists did that as well, and even the mm. Epicureans did that. These are kind of well recognized in ancient times. Mm. And so vir virtue is like you pointed out before, it's a way of being excellent. And mm. there's there's the excellence of I don't know like here I've got a cable right it's mm -hmm. excellent if if it, the signal goes through the cable and I don't I yeah. don't run into any problems with it but that's about it uh, or this water bottle is mm -hmm. excellent if uh, I guess it holds water and doesn't poison me or yeah. anything along the long you know those lines but but we are we are excellent in much more complex ways mm. and so um, dividing it into four main categories, um, there's there's justifications for why why those four virtues. And each of the four virtues should be thought of as not just like one single thing, but like a bundle, because mm. that's that's the way that they discuss them when they, they get a chance. So justice doesn't just include um, giving everybody what what's fair for them, or you know, if I make a promise to you, fulfilling that promise. It mm. also includes what the Stoics called um, uh, beneficence or kindness. Hmm. So, you know, <clears throat> seeing the, the old lady who needs help with her bags, um, in the grocery store and taking it out to her car, that's, that's an act of justice. It's, and you're not hmm. doing it just because she's, she's owed that you're doing something extra because that's also part of hmm. justice. So justice has to do with like this whole interpersonal realm, um, giving, you know, Doing, doing things that reflect our social nature, the Stoics would say. And then there's, <clears throat> there's um, temperance, which has to do with our bodies and all the different things that we either find pleasant or find um, unpleasant and would like to avoid. Mm. So, you know, if you think about um, going to the dentist, for example, a lot of people dread going to the dentist, mm -hmm. including myself. Mm -hmm. uh, in part from having bad experiences, um, getting getting your your body to the to the chair and like sitting there and letting them mess around with your mouth, that might be an act of temperance. Mm -hmm. It might also be an act of courage too. Yeah, um, o overcoming fear, <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. But it, you know, it, it's important for you, for the health of your body. Um, there's there's all sorts of other things like you know we, we usually think about temperance in terms of like not eating too much or you know not eating the right, the wrong sorts of foods or not not you know indulging too much in intoxicants, mm. um, but you can also be intemperate in in ways that seem to be healthy, you know you think about so it was it's kind of funny I, I um, on the street this morning as I was walking the dog, there was one of those you know supplements that the the uh, weightlifters like to take. Mm -hmm. uh, there was there was like a can of it, totally empty on the ground on a city street, and I was like, "Well, who the hell like consumes this stuff on a Saturday night you know, <laughs> in downtown of Milwaukee?" Right, <laughs> and, and so I actually posted a little joking thing about that on on Twitter, uh -huh. and I said that it was probably some you know some juice head weightlifters, and people yeah. kind of weighed in about that. Um, they, you know, they can be intemperate in the ways that they devote themselves to the cultivation of the body. Mm, yeah. um, you know, a, a lot of them are driven by by um, sort of what the Stoics would call a sort of mistaken <laughs> priorities. You know. Yeah. Uh, just oh, as you much can as you can definitely see oh, in, in pretty much every every career path or every industry or every mm. interest there are people who take it way too far <laughs> and yeah. if, if you yeah. look at some of the people well, and, and, who and, and, yeah for the wrong reasons is, is mm. you know yeah. usually when somebody's taking something too far you got to ask well why are they doing that what what yeah. are they getting out of it? yeah it's not just that well you, you went past a limit um mm. the stoic would say um it's important important to know what you're what you're trying to get out of it what what assumptions you have what judgments mm. you have about the world in part because then you can figure out well how do i get myself less screwed up yeah. so if you're if you're like i don't know let's say you're super into exercise because you have a um terrible fear of death and you think that by exercising a lot you're going to stave it off mm. um just telling yourself, okay, you're going to do less exercise, that'll just make you more anxious. Mm, so yeah. you have to approach that fear of death and, and figure that out. Or it could mm. be, I need to be super attractive or uh, my life isn't going to be any good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
then you want to look at that instead. Well, I mean, like coming from the fitness industry, like I can tell you that, yeah, oh, some yeah. people don't, some people don't <laughs> take it far enough. Some people, people take it way too far. <laughs> and, and it's, it's always interesting to see that when you do take it too far, it has actually negative consequences on your health. It's like, you know, yeah. I was, I was, even, I was considering this year because one of the, one of the aspects of, of what I'm going to be doing now is showing people how to use stoicism to essentially set good goals and then to oh. achieve those goals. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I was thinking, cool, what would I do in my life? You know, and there was a period there where I was like, I'm going to do a male physique competition. And the reason I want to do that was to essentially learn about my body, to get to mm-hmm. a good body fat percentage and to see if I could come to a certain point in my body where it's like the ideal. But then, you know, a couple of my friends who are also in the industry, they're kind of like, mm, I don't know, man, it's like, it's very unhealthy. And that made me think about it. It's like, yeah, it's a lot of what they do in these competitions is actually very unhealthy for the body long term. It's like depriving yeah. yourself of, of, of water for a certain amount of times, um, you know, e- eating very specific calorie um, uh, calorie budgets, essentially, so that you can get to like the lowest possible body fat percentage and and what yeah, what yeah. you and and the, i don't see that there's anything necessarily wrong with doing a physique competition i think it's awesome that people want to get to that stage but but it's like first ask the question why you're doing it um you know then ask the question is it is it really healthy for me you know because there might be a point along the way to getting to that competition where it's actually it tips over and it stops becoming healthy for you. And now it's unhealthy in the long term, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, that, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And I, I think mm. the other question is you got to ask at each point, how am I doing it? You know, in That's what it. manner, <clears throat> you know? Um, and so sometimes that can be framed in terms of too much or too little, mm. but the motivation matters. Um, yeah. Even like the, the time that you're doing things, you know, um, mm. you could also say, what are you sacrificing in order to do that? Like if, if you have to sacrifice, oh, so you're, you're married, I'm, I'm married, right? Mm. If, if you're, if you're sacrificing your marriage in order to attain, I don't know, physical attractiveness goals, let's call it, mm. that's, that's a really mistaken set of priorities, right? Mm. But there are people who do that sort of thing. Mm, definitely uh, yeah so so temperance is is important and temperance also has to do with like um the whole realm of sexuality you know um this is an area i think where maybe the the ancient stoics were a bit you know we would consider them rather prudish i i don't think that they're they're um you know attacks on adultery or anything mm-hmm. um aren't still relevant today but mm. You, you see a lot of things like Epictetus, you know, for example, thinking that a man has to have a beard in order to be a man and mm. all of that. So so some of that we might want to put aside or say we need to rethink that in terms of our contemporary culture. Mm. But well, it might even the, be a matter of saying like, OK, no matter what you're doing, make sure that it doesn't take away from your ability yes. to think virtuously and to think rationally. Like it, it, yeah. as long as it doesn't take away from your ability to do that. Um, then you should be somewhat okay, <laughs> you might you might say. Yeah, and there's and there's probably a lot of ways that people justify to themselves that if they looked at closely, they'd be like, yeah, actually, this is bad for me. I, I shouldn't yeah. I shouldn't do this sort of thing. Yeah, not that it's intrinsically bad by itself, but it's it's bad for them. Yeah, and um, so so that would fall under temperance as well, mm. eating and drinking. You know. Um, this is a big problem here in America. Um, you know, we have, we have so many people who, who are obese, um, or at least overweight, you know, myself included, although I'm trying, I'm trying to, to change that. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of it has to do with, um, how easy it is to, to consume. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, we've got so much crappy food readily yeah. available to us. And so, you know, temperance would, would, would suggest, again, prioritizing what's, what's good for us. And mm. then there's courage. Um, and a lot of people tend to think of courage as just having to do with fear, but the Stoics saw it as dealing with all the emotions. Mm. So being able to keep your anger in check is a matter of courage for them. So it's, it's in a broader sense than just, mm. just uh, what we typically think of as bravery. Um, but we do have to 
we do have to like force ourselves to do the right thing a lot of the yeah. time. And that's where, that's where fortitude or courage comes in as a virtue. Mm. Um, if I might jump in there for a second, yeah, I was recently listening to Jordan Peterson talking about how, uh, how his kid would tantrum when he was younger. And he, yeah. one thing that he mentioned there, which really stuck out to me, he was like, firstly, if you saw somebody, in their forties acting like a two year old when they were tantruming, <laughs> you would be horrified. You'd have to be 30 feet away. You wouldn't want to be anywhere near them. Right. Because it's a horrifying thing yeah, to witness, yeah. you know, they just turn red in the face. They're furious. And also he said something that stuck out to me, which was that it's no fun to have a temper tantrum. And often when you look at a kid and they're tantruming, you think, well, that's just a sport. Like, but, but they're overtaken by something like something deeply crazy is going on in their mind. Right. And it's no fun for them whatsoever. But, but, but essentially what I'm hearing from you is, is, is it's like courage is being able to overcome that darker side of ourselves sometimes that pops up and to be like, okay, well, well, no, like I know that I'm feeling this, but I need to act in this specific way. And that's essentially when you see the kid finally calming down yeah. and saying, cool, I'm now willing to be an active participant in a good society and, and, and be a kind, you know, a kind child, essentially. It's like, it's, it's, it's not, I don't know is exactly how to describe this, but it seems to me as if courage is also overcoming those, those darker sides of us that just pop up from time to time. Yeah. It's, it's about, um, being able to maintain and to impose self-control. Mm, um, that, it. And it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be like, you know, doing violence to oneself in, in a psychological way. Mm. I mean, it, sometimes it could be just a nice steady flow that's, oh, that's well integrated. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it also does apply to other emotions too, like not, not allowing. So a good example of this, the Stoics were kind of, kind of mixed on the subject of grief. Um, mm. some of the Stoics said grief is always a, a bad thing. <clears throat> um, Epictetus said you can, you can grieve with your neighbor who's lost a kid, but don't groan inwardly. So don't, don't, you know, mm. you can, you can exhibit the social things. Seneca is a bit more, um, open to the idea of yeah. grief, but he still thinks it has to be rational. You know, mm. um, you, you don't. Go, you don't like, you know, tear your clothing apart and yeah. you know, rip your, your, your hair out and um, that, that sort of thing. And so courage would be needed in order to, like, help pull yourself out of, uh, say, a well of depression. Mm. Um, and, and a lot of times we don't have these virtues to the degree that we need them. But the Stoics thought that the seeds of virtue are within us. So mm. if, if we, if we kind of, if we try, right, we'll often find more strength within ourselves and then we can build upon that. We can turn mm. that into, to a habit. So mm. I, exercise is a great example, right? When people yeah. first go to the gym, it sucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you work out and you're sore and you know, then, you know, you, you scheduled, you're going to go back in two days and, and you start finding excuses. Mm. Um, and then, you know, you, you do it for a week and it, it, you're still sore after workouts. And then, mm. you know, after you've done it for a couple months, it becomes, it becomes much more, uh, easy to do. You'll still probably mm. have some, if you're my age, your joints will hurt and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, things like that, but um, it's not as bad, and then well, and then eventually it gets to the point where it becomes kind of natural to you. Mm. And 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 I. Th